What is the most shameless yet shameful thing you've ever done? Those lonely Thursday nights filled with nothing but libido and ugly sobbing? Eating unhealthy fast foods for the second time that week? The most shameless thing I have ever done or seen is a very special show. We all like cute, sexy girls. What's to hate about them? They take away all of your sorrows and fill you with joy and very vivid imagery about what they would look like if they were to be missing a few articles of clothing. The anime genre called the harem takes this concept and amplifies it by adding a few extra girls who all want to do it with the main character. Quintessential Quintuplets was a shameless watch filled with 5 whole different girls and 10 different boobs, all cute in their own rights. Also, I am on Team Ichika so fight me. But something I watched recently was the most shameless of all. Shamelessly good. The hit 2023 anime, The 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You, takes the already shameless concept of sexy anime girls and makes it better. Exactly 100 times better. But how exactly does it do that? Just by the premise alone, the show has to be terrible, right? Surprisingly, no. This was one of the best harems I've ever seen. And today, I, Noah Boakoa, will be talking about the shamelessly best anime, The 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You. And if you agree with what I said here, or just enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe. It helps a lot. First, as I do for any show, I will explain the premise. The premise of the show goes as follows. Rentoro Aijo, who has never had any luck with love, has been rejected for the hundredth time of his life. He goes to a shrine where he begs the gods for a soulmate and finds out that he has had such bad luck because of a mistake one of the gods made while choosing his soulmate. However, his love life will start looking better from here on out because he is destined to have a hundred soulmates. He needs to be with all of his soulmates because if he doesn't, a tragic fate will fall upon both parties. This is a story of how Rentaro goes to date all 100 of the girls. Aside from the obvious things such as cute character design, the first thing I noticed was that the main character wasn't the run-of-the-mill pathetic blind protagonist. His physical attributes from his height to face are above average. And guess what? He isn't an absolute pathetic asshole. He is what all harem MCs should strive to be. He's a very understanding and caring person who loves each of his girlfriends like none other. Each of his girlfriends has a legitimate reason to like Rentaro. Hell, I think I'm falling in love with him as I write this. He is a genuine, hardworking type of guy who would spend the night looking for four-leaf clovers simply because two girls wanted it. Or the type of guy to copy an entire book to make a text-to-speech program for a girl that feels uncomfortable talking. And they say chivalry is dead. Countless more actions of pure genuine kindness are taken by him in this mere 12 episode anime. And before this turns into a video of me just glazing a fictional character, I better move on. So far, I've only talked about the male protagonists, but I'm still missing a crucial part. The 100 girls. The girls in the show are all somehow different from one another, with each of them having a unique personality and character design that transcends just their deta trope. I'll start with the first girls. Karane is a tsundere. Almost exactly a tsundere. But I enjoyed her with the main difference that distinguished her from someone like Taiga being self-awareness. All of her jokes were really meta and it almost felt like the show itself was making fun of her and her trope. I say this because her it's not like I care about you or anything baka comes out in places it typically wouldn't. I think she is the most tsundere tsundere to ever tsundere. But because it is so extreme, they are able to make her funny. Also, the main character is so good that he brings out her cute mellow part even though she is a violent tsundere. She is the perfect tsundere. Next, we have Hakari, the second of our first girls. She's a very womanly elegant girl on the outside but has times when the savage somewhat perverted side comes out. I think many of her traits are comparable to Kaguya from Kaguya-sama Love is War where they both put up a certain front but are both charming in other ways too. She strives to be the perfect girlfriend, and she kinda is. Endless love for Rentaro, is transparent with how she feels, kind, cute, but with a certain elegant womanly charm you don't get from someone cuter like Shizuka. I love the bit where she is happy about something and says her inner thoughts out loud instead of what she should say to protect that image of her. I'll just show you. Lily, Hakari. <laughs> And the noises she makes are just hilarious every time. <laughs> and... <laughs> I 
That brings me to the next girl, Shizuka. I do think that she has had the least amount of character. Her only character traits are that she is quiet, shy, and weak. But even then, she is just so fucking adorable. I think that this was a good choice, honestly. She doesn't need to have that much character to still have those cute moments that just make you want to give her a big hug. And the other characters seem to agree. Everyone just wants to protect her, even a dog. I enjoyed every single moment with her. She was just pleasant to look at. I think even if she did have a really well thought out backstory that gave her reasons for the way she is, it wouldn't have mattered. Maybe even made it worse because it would take away time from her looking cute. Characters don't have to have an insane backstory with a bunch of death. We can do things like they did for Shizuka and still be wildly successful. It was really efficient writing to make Shizuka like this as there are 97 other characters that need more character. Speaking of efficiency, we have the efficient girl herself, Nano. She's a very stoic girl. The people I instantly thought of when I saw her was Ayame Himuro and Shinya Yukimura from Science Fell in Love, so I tried to prove it. The looks are almost identical to Himuro, but the more scientific logical nature fits perfectly with Yukimura. Anyways, her bit of being very efficient was always funny too. Normally, characters like her are just assholes who don't have much going for them, but the story is very aware of this, so they went all in with it. So far, in fact, that she turns into a good funny character with an absurd bit. Our next girlfriend is a drug addict herself, Kusuri. By the way, Kusuri means medicine or drug in Japanese, so that's just interesting. But more about her character, she likes drugs. That's really it. But they are also aware that this is a character. She just has a burning passion for medicines and she pursues it, just like she loves Rentaro so much and pursued him. However, the first big conflict of the show was that she made a mistake with the drug and it could have hurt Rentaro. She loves both so much and doesn't know which to abandon, but like always, Rentaro uses his silver tongue to make her understand that he loves her so much and her passion for medicine too. With good communication and chemistry, no pun intended, they are able to get through that. Her drugs also come into good use during the Hakari Retrieval arc where she busts out a night vision medicine to be able to see in the dark. You might be thinking that this is just a deus ex machina. And yeah, the show seems to think so too. Things like this is just quintessentially how you should do jokes. She made a 6-9 drug, tried out immortality, a zombie drug, and every single time, without fail, they were self-aware. This is without a doubt the most important thing with anime. They need to have enough self-awareness to understand when what they are doing is ridiculous, because at least then, they can go all in with no hesitation for those bits. Without self-awareness, the show would still seem ridiculous, but would not come out as strong and it would seem unintentional with how absurd it is. This anime has a very slapstick gag style comedy mostly based around the characters and their interactions. Everyone bears a really nonchalant attitude towards all of the moments and they don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The slapsticky comedy style is very reminiscent of a really funny comedy like Psyche K. Lots of facial reactions, fourth wall breaks, and self-aware jokes about each character trope that makes for the perfect comedy. Finally, we have the craziest girlfriend. Imagine being so much of a chat that he dates one of the girls and their mother. Because our next girlfriend is none other than Hahari, Hakari's mom. Also, I won't go into the morality of the age gap because I simply don't care as this is a fiction and is supposed to be ridiculous. She has a more written out backstory that has to do with the death of a past lover, childbirth at a young age, and wanting to protect her only daughter. Initially, she didn't know how Rentaro was and forced her daughter to stop being with him after finding out he is five-timing, which feels insane to say. But this goes to show that this show also knows how to do drama as well. The main reason why it was so emotional even for Rentaro was because she just cares so much about Hakari. She originally came off as a cold apathetic person who just cares about herself. But in reality, she only cares about Hakari and is willing to risk their relationship to protect her. However, when we find out her true nature and motives, everyone starts loving her. Personality wise, she's almost the same as Hakari, but more bold. Even an almost identical copy of a character is unique enough and has great chemistry with others that they don't feel repetitive. The bits between the mother-daughter duo having very similar reactions to things was simple, but still funny. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll start closing off. But before we do that, one question lingers in our minds. Who is the best girl? The Mera Tsundere? The womanly yet horny girl, the absolute bomb of cuteness, efficient girl, 
druggy mommy? The objective answer to this question is all of them. All of us 100 girlfriend fans know that there is no designated best girl. All of the girls are equally lovable, charming, and adorable. And I am very excited for the future of this possibly long running show. I mean, they still need 94 other girls. This was a shorter one, but regardless, one of my favorites. Maybe I should start watching more good anime. Nah, probably not. I hate myself after all. My name is Noobo Koa, and thank you for watching.